Well, hey everybody, it is Mantis Monday, now on Tuesday, special edition. There's a reason for that, it's because I screwed up the audio for what should have posted yesterday. So I'm back here on the range at C2 Tactical in Scottsdale, thank you to them for letting us use the range. And of course, thank you to Mantis for sponsoring the Mantis Monday videos. And today I wanna to talk about, we're down here at some distance, come out here. So right here, what you can see is I've got some bullseyes down range. And these are the days where having that extreme marksmanship and knowing how to really set your sights still, keep the wobble appropriate and acceptable and get your hits will pay off big time. So let's work on it. Whether in dry fire or in live fire, the Mantis X Firearms training system really helps you to get better every day with your defensive shooting. I use mine all the time. Okay, I actually think this is one of the strengths of the Mantis X Firearms Performance System. We'll talk about that again in a little bit. But what I wanna talk about is these bullseyes out at distance. And you go, gosh, John, do I really need to be able to shoot a bullseye? I'm out here right now at about 18, 19 yards, and do I really need to be able to do that? I'm gonna show you exactly why you need to do that. So. Most of you know I was in vocational ministry for 15 years. And the last church that I pastored, which was for 10 and a half, almost 11 years, was from my pulpit to the back door of the church was 19 yards. So this is the kind of shot that I might have needed to take if I had to defend my congregation. Of course, if you watched what happened uh, this last weekend in Sri Lanka, you saw multiple uh, terrorist bombings. I'm not saying that that would have happened, you know, wouldn't have happened without a firearm out or whatever. But... My point is, is that sometimes you might have to take this kind of a shot in order to protect yourself or your congregation. Now, is this kind of a distance gonna be typical in you know, a, a crackhead trying to shiv you with a screwdriver? No, you're not gonna get this kind of shot. Though you might, it, it might open up this far. We have seen defensive encounters with shots over 20 yards, that, that does happen. It's kind of rare there. However, when we're talking about active murderers, when we're talking about church security, when we're talking about you know, in open spaces where maybe you're not the primary victim, but you're in the vicinity of that and it's not gonna stop unless you stop it, these are the kind of things that gotta go. So what is it that we're working on here? The marksmanship fundamentals are where everything comes together here. So when I'm looking down range and I wanna get a hit inside of the black, right? So I'm really after the black. What am I gonna do to have to do that? Of course, I'm cheating, right? So I am a red dot shooter. So I have a, a Benvolio here, my P30 uh, with a LEM trigger and RMR on it. So again, all I have to do is put the dot on the target. Okay, cool. But now what I have to do is I have to make sure that I have enough grip on this gun that when I trigger the gun, and again, verifying don't have a round in the chamber right now. So when I trigger this gun, that the muzzle stays where I want it to, that my sights stay inside of the wobble zone of the black, and the shot breaks cleanly. Now, of course, here's the thing. I think a lot of times what people think is they think, oh, okay, I have to have a very still gun in order to break the shot. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, what you're gonna see at these kind of distances is you're gonna see the wobble more than ever. You are going to have movement, but it's getting the movement to be acceptable and stay in that black and then trigger the gun, pressing that trigger straight to the rear so that your dot or your sights stay on that target give you enough of that. So let's watch and kind of see what that looks like. So I can get out here at the range, even at a public range, I can do this, you know, run the targets out 15, 18, 20 yards and get a look-see. This is something we were working on a lot at the Range Master Advanced uh, Instructor uh, course here last weekend with Tom Gibbons. Is again, now I get, I'm gonna get all the grip that I want on the gun. I'm gonna get pinky grip and a lot of pressure front to back here, like we've talked about many times. I'm gonna get all the side to side pressure that I want. Now I'm gonna drive up and again, see that dot and the dot is moving. I'm gonna do my best to get you a shot from inside the dot and show you what that looks like here. You're gonna have to trust me for the moment that I see and I've got enough. Now I start to trigger the gun. You can see with my hammer coming back. Have I got enough? Have I got enough? Have I got enough? I do, I do, I do, let it go. Now then, what happens when I do that, if I let the gun go off and then it comes back, I see the sights again and I get on there, I get enough where I get a good hit. So again, if I see that again, I drive out there, I wanna see everything, reset my trigger under recoil if I can. See everything here, got it, got it. Got everything and get back on the target. Let's do one more, see everything that I need to here, got what I need to. Jeez, trigger the gun, John. Okay, so now I've got three in there. Saw my sights, reset my trigger. Let's go see how we did. Okay, so you saw the second one that I did, which was just a little bit low, but again, my target here was in the black anyways. At about 18 yards, am I okay with this? Now, why am I okay with this? You notice this? This is about the size of a fist. Guess what else is the size of a fist? Pumps and pipes, right? So if I said, hey, I wanted to do that and I want to have that much press, am I okay with this? Yeah, I'm absolutely okay with this. Two 10 ring hits and one nine ring hit. Now. 
can we do this a little bit faster? In fact, we can do this a little bit faster if we want. We, we will probably see a little bit of an opening up if we do, but what I want you to start to work on first is recognizing that when I push out and I'm using something like a B8 target, how much it stresses the fundamentals of my marksmanship. And we can uh, test that and see how uh, our, our scores show up to help us here. Now, again, one of the great things that you can do here is, is you can run a B8 target, you can print them up off the interwebs, I'll put a link in the description to that, and then run that sucker out to 15 yards and just focus on, I'm gonna get every bit of trigger that I can, and then I can, I can get all the sights that I need and press straight to the rear and let the gun go off and surprise me. Let's try it some more. Okay, this is gonna be difficult to do. I'm trying to look through my, my viewfinder here on my iPhone, so I'm gonna hit the record button here and see if I can show this to you this way. This is like, uh, Extreme Marksmanship Challenge, Annie Oakley edition. Let's see if I can pull this off. Now you see that was, there was wobble there, but notice that it came back where I wanted. Came back where I wanted. <laughs> Trying to find the dot again when it's in this non-typical place is hilarious. Okay, three shots that went through there. <laughs> Oh, I hope we got him. Let's see. Okay, so the funny part is, is that doing it that way because I had to focus on my marksmanship fundamentals so much, I actually had better shots than I did when I was looking through it myself, which I think proves that I'm an idiot all the way through. So what you saw there, as you saw, there was some wobble, right? There was some wobble of the dot, but that was okay because the gun went off while it was in here. Just so happened I got three really, really good shots. So I tell you what, this is how you work on that. Again, I get a little bit of acceptable wobble, trigger that gun straight to the rear, let the gun go off when I have that acceptable wobble. And if you take this into your live fire with you the next time you go, you will have better success at every level of shooting. Let's do a Mantis X benchmark. Let's do one more of these and let's see if, if it translates the scores from the Mantis X into long distance accuracy. Bet you it will. Score is one thing. The way that the muzzle moves is another. I'm going to go for the bottom left one this time. And again, I'm just trying to get good grip, see everything that I need to see, see an acceptable wobble, press through nice and easy. No time pressure here. Okay, that was a good score. That was, that was about as good as they get, 99.0. Let's see that again. That's a good shot. Yeah, 93.5. Don't have any problems with that. Not a bad shot. That one wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. That's three. Four, good. Feel good about that. Actually, that shot was a little bit lower. Okay, muzzle was moving a little bit. Still got a good hit, though. Feel good about that. That one was okay. Okay, good. Good hits all the way through. It was a little high like I saw it. That's a good shot. Grip came off just a little bit there afterwards. All right, let's bring the gun back down. All right, let's get a feel. See my dot, press the shot. See my dot, press the shot. Nice and still. Good. That was a little bit up. Okay, the dot was a little higher than I would have liked it to have gone, but it was a good shot anyhow. I mean, we had a 93.7 on it. Okay, let's see one more, one more time. Uh, that was a good shot as well. 94.3 is my total. Let's go and see what that translates into. So what you saw there is we averaged in the 94s. Let's see what that looks like overall here. And amazingly, a 94 on uh, average on the Mantis X, we're at about uh, 20 yards there, translates into a, a 100 point score. You know, uh, what did we have there? I'm gonna call that one an X. I'm gonna call that an X. We probably had nine X out of 100 on that. So will it help you? I think it really will. So the scores there translate that really well here. So when you take your time, when you get enough acceptable wobble, press that trigger straight to the rear, this kind of stuff will really help you become a better shooter. So go try it, guys.